I'm fucking back. I am fucking back, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Wait. Hold on. Wait. Just so you think that it's... Just so you don't think it's just a fucking black screen that we're going to look at today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. 24. The best video... Ga- uh, 24's podcast. The best video gaming and sports podcast on the entire internet. Please unpause... Please unpause my music, for Christ's sake. <clears throat> um... Cyberpunk 2077, Night City Wire, episode five. We're going to be looking at it. Going to be looking at everything that um, that happened over the course of this event. Please pause my music for the love of Christ. So I already recorded this. And um, I recorded it for two hours. Two hour long podcast, ladies and gentlemen, that I will never get back. Uh, my computer ran out of memory. And it just didn't properly export or render. I don't know what the file got corrupted, and um, it was a it was a good podcast. I was happy with it. It was one of the best, and um, now I have to do it all over again. So yeah, this is gonna be fun for me. Hopefully, it's gonna be fun for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, great podcast coming up for you, uh, literally right now. Turn the music off. <clears throat> I already saw everything in um. <clears throat> excuse me, in this uh, episode of Night City Wire. There was so much important stuff to talk about that I went super, super long. And then on top of that, um, they had a lot of great stuff, awesome stuff to, uh, you know, to watch. I really, really liked what they um, what they did for Night City Wire. All right, let's get started. And by... Me seeing, like, by me saying I've seen everything, I've seen everything. Like, I've seen the 30 minutes. I know that they have, um, that they've, <clears throat> that they've also given, like, an extensive amount of time. Or not an extent. Yeah, they've given, like, 16 hours of gameplay. Excuse me. They haven't given 16 hours of gameplay. They've let journalists play the, uh, the game for 16 hours. Uh, I wanted to watch, I, I saw IGN's video on it. It was completely useless, essentially. Essentially, excuse me. Um, I did not see Games Radar, their video on it. I'll kind of look at their video after this because I kind of meant to do this, uh, do that after the last podcast that I recorded, and it just it just didn't take. So now I'm like, I got to get this out as quickly as I humanly can because I'm late already on it. And then on top of that, I I freaking I, I have to do it all over again. Anyways, it's still fun. You know, we'll still have some fun, but. Jesus Christ. I'm not excited to uh, to literally say everything that I said for two hours again. Because I probably won't, to be honest with you. I'll probably mix it up. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Night City Wire Episode 5. The show from us at CD Projekt Red, where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. Now we're going to start today's episode with a new trailer that will take a closer look at Johnny Silverhand before we go behind the scenes with Keanu Reeves and have a chat to English adaptation director Boris who will tell us exactly what it was like to work with him. Then we'll be exploring the original score and talking about some of the radio stations you might listen to while driving around Night City. Before we take a look at the Jolly technology, which is powering facial animation in Cyberpunk, and unveil a new My Reward scheme, which anyone can take part in, no matter which platform you'll be playing Cyberpunk on. We'll then wrap up today's episode with a brand new gameplay trailer. It's a busy episode, and it will be our final episode of Night City Wire before the game launches on December 10th. So, let's get going. So one of the first mistakes that I made on um, on the last podcast was kind of go into uh, significant detail talking about something that just kind of flashed on my screen and kind of on your screen if you're watching the podcast. It was the um, it was the detailed <clears throat> look of the um, at the at, at your cyberware. Right. And I want to talk about it. Because there's a lot of good stuff that happens, like, kind of in this little section. I think it's, like, it's somewhere at the end. Here it is. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so that way we can get a better, a way better look at it, right? I'm like, I'm going to talk about it anyways right now. It's like, I may as well get you a better 
image of what's going on here. So I think this is Dr. Chrome. Now in Cyberpunk 2077, there are these things called Ripper Docs. If you didn't already know, now you know. Essentially, they are doctors that deal with cyberware, right? And what's cyberware? Cyberware is, is kind of like, it's it's technology to kind of augment your body, right? Like different eyes, limbs, legs. You can have you can replace certain parts of your circulatory system and things of that nature, right? So this is, I think, Dr. Chrome or at least his assistant. And we're gonna go into his um his whole like process with um with getting cyberware. So <clears throat> I think this is all I think all of this gameplay is final. So this is how it's going to look when it looks like we're it, this is how it's going to look when we actually like interact with the menus in um with the cyberware right and how i know this a it kind of looks done and b there's no watermark here that says work in progress and as a matter of fact i want i want you to keep this in mind notice how little gameplay will have work in progress work in progress work in progress over it there's pretty much none and if there's some there's very very little right so that's kind of how I know that this this isn't a work in progress. This is the final version of the game. This is the finished version of the game. There's no work in progress watermark, right? So here you have all of the different systems when it comes to uh, cyberware. You have the frontal cortex, the ocular system, the circulatory system, immune system, nervous system, integumentary system. All of those are like systems within your body, right? Like like the integumentary is like your skin, your nervous system, I think is is like your spine. Your immune system is what fights off like like viruses and stuff like that. Your circulatory system is what pumps your blood. It's your heart essentially, right? Then you have your skeleton, your hands, your arms, your legs, your operating system, your OS, okay? <clears throat> so all of this, you know, we finally have a look at kind of a menu for Cyberpunk 2077, your level, by the way, during this, uh, during this little section is, it's level 27, it's kind of hidden between, you know, the, the title of the, of the video, but I think that reads 27, I'm pretty sure it does, here's, the, and by the way, you're out of vendor, so it's not gonna be your inventory, inventory, it's just gonna be, like, you talking to people and stuff like that, so you can trade some cyberware, I guess, here is your weight, it looks like, not, it looks like it is. This is like the exact same way that they did The Witcher 3. 124 out of 240. Here's your credits, your your eddies. 20,998. Uh, uh, the doctor's eddies, Dr. Chrome, 185,878. And then they'll kind of go into detail about, <clears throat> about the, um, the different, the, um, the different, cyberware within the video game so first they're going to go into the um the other they're gonna kind of like hover over them like very very slightly they're like um uh, like, like right now for example and we'll get into them so they're hovering over your titanium bones increases carrying capacity by 20 percent metal infused bones capable of withstanding heavy loads are they going to anything else i don't think so i think they just go into titanium bones and then they'll go into os and then they'll open up the os right so your os is a raven micro cyber mark IV. uh how i'm reading this is it's a legendary it's a legendary um piece of equipment or a, a legendary os the cyber deck i have no idea what this is item level level one base ram i'll talk about that in a second buffer size is eight six slots no idea what that is by the way Allows you to perform quick hacks on targets and devices while scanning. An interesting, like, question that I have is, can you do that for everything? Like, like, does every operating system come with a specific thing that it allows you to do? Or is it just, like, this operating system allows you to have quick hacks? I don't know. But, continuing forward from there, increases the time it takes for an enemy net runner to hack you by 100%. Because, yes, you can have, like, breaches in your own operating system. Essentially, your body is kind of like a computer in the future. And so people can hack into that. But at the same token, you can hack into other people's um, cyberware as well. Increases quick hack spread 
distance by 60%. No idea what that means. Um, increases CyberDeck RAM recovery rate by six units per 60 seconds. Oh, okay. I'll talk about that in a second. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, device hacks. Some call these decks battleships when it comes to system security and fortified anti-theft protocols. It's a foolproof piece of machinery. This is the Raven microfiber micro cyber excuse me mark four this is a legendary um os and it looks like you're a level 27 when you'll get it don't worry i'll, I'll get i'll get into what that means in a second but they kind of just show off the other um <clears throat> the other pieces of equipment that you can have as well the other um, os's that you can have i want you to keep this in mind right when it comes to the um the raven micro cyber deck and the 10 base ram i was like what does that mean exactly what does that mean well let me show you where is it where's the hacking pretty sure it's a little bit yeah is it after here yeah here it is so what it means by 10 base ram right to perform quick hacks you have to have i guess ram right um in your um in embedded into you right so when we look at the RAM, right, for your character, boom. I mean, I paused it perfectly, by the way. When we look at the RAM, right, this is how much the RAM is going. To, this is how much the quick hack is going to cost, right? So kind of to break down some things, you have your available quick hacks, your camera control, which costs three RAMs, right? So it's going to cost this amount. Turn off remote, turn off remote de deactivation, two RAMs. Distract enemies, two RAMs, right? You have four you're four for four. You have more than enough to hack this camera, right? With your with your RAM, right? Every single thing costs three or two. You have four, so you can so you can. That's how you essentially hack, by the way. And then here's some other statistics. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure these are like these statistics on it, like zero seconds, zero seconds duration, zero second cooldown, zero seconds upload time, one point five seconds. I'm pretty sure. I I don't want to say pretty sure, but like I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're just like, this is a, a different build of the game. And, um, this isn't like, like you, you'll have the actual numbers when you get the game. Like, I'm pretty sure it's not zero seconds to hack a camera. It's like, it doesn't make any sense, but they kind of go forward a little bit from here. We'll talk about this in a second or in a little bit. They kind of go forward from here and they're shooting and they're shooting and they're shooting and they're interacting with this gang and then boom, right? It kind of goes fast, but to kind of show you just how, like, fast quick hacks are within this video, right, or within the video game, right, like, you're using your gun, you're using your, um, I forgot what, your rail gun, I think that's what it's called, you're using your, um, this, I guess this is a, a type of rail gun, right, so you're shooting it, and then you go into your quick hack, right, so this is a higher level build of the game, this is a higher level character, you have 18 cyber you have 18 ram right when you hack this person you can have them do a, a couple of different things right you can have a breach protocol which apparently you can't do you have um reboot optics which essentially will make them blind and then you get to uh have them commit suicide so there's different levels of and by the way the suicide costs 13 um cyber deck ram the reboot optics cost four, and then the breach code protocol, excuse me, costs zero because you can't actually, you know, you can't, it, it's blocked. You can't use it. And here's, again, all of the RAM that you have. You have 18 out of 18, so you can easily use the suicide um, hack, in which they do. And then they also use other cyberware as well. This is kind of an interesting little part of the game that they, that they have here where they're shooting... Right, they're shooting their gun like like you would normally do. Then they switch to quick hacking, and then they use their rocket launcher in their left arm, and um, as they as they clear out the room and watch the guy uh, kill himself, essentially. Again, there's a lot of really really cool stuff within this whole like Night City Wire event that we're gonna get into, but I thought that that was kind of a really really awesome little like segment with uh, Night City. By the way, if you're wondering about this. Oop, well, I don't want to go that far just yet. If you're wondering about like this, I don't know what that is. I kind of have some theories on it. I'll kind of talk about it later on.
Okay. Let's move forward from here. Where'd you even come from? How are we even talking? We gotta get out of here, understand? And I'll kill anyone who gets in my way. You weren't dreaming, B. Those were memories. You two are connected in a way I can't make head or tail of. Us who? Me and who, Vic? Silverhand. Johnny Silverhand. Real talk of the town back in my day. He died, like, forever ago. You need to say there's an actual terrorist in my head. Right now. He burned down half the city just to prove he was right. And burned the other half just for fun. What do you want from me? Huh. Destroy Arasaka. I don't even know what that means. Do whatever it takes to stop him. Defeat him. Gut him. He already tried to take over your body. You know, just for a little while. Hear me, asshole? A bullet to the fucking brain! Get out! Just get the fuck out! Tell me how to get rid of it. You don't have much time left. You're a dick, you know? And you're a cunt. Maybe we'll fit together after all. Alright. Pretty good jokes from Johnny. <clears throat> so, kind of going into the whole Johnny Silverhand kind of, um, you know, trailer and stuff like that that they have. One of the themes that I kind of noticed about this version of Night, this, this episode of Night City Wire is that they're kind of, they're kind of going with this theme of, switching between you and Johnny Silverhand, right? So there's some parts in this trailer where I guess you're playing as Johnny or you have his perspective within the video game, right? So you kind of see his his previous memories, his previous thoughts, his his previous feelings, right? And I think this may be one of them. It kind of opens up with his art with you kind of with him kind of passed out on the ground and he wakes up and there's like a cat kind of looks like a gigantic rat to me. Um, on the ground and uh, it looks like he's slow key faded right and then he gets up and then he takes drugs and things of that nature but in this trailer oh yeah they're kind of going to cover this later on but I was absolutely right about this right and this is the the beauty of having hindsight um, and having you know and having watched it and uh, had a podcast about it for like two hours that I can't fucking recover so I was wondering when I was watching it originally, this, um, uh, the Night City Wire event, I was wondering, I was like, is this a new apartment within, you know, um, that, that you can buy, right? Uh, because this unit right here, this isn't like a television. This is brain dance, right? This is, or maybe not even brain dance, really. This may be like, um, like a central console that you can use to jack into the net, right? Like if you've played the new Mega Man games where it, like there's Lan and then there's Mega Man and he jacks into like the cyber world and stuff like that. Depending on who you are, you either love those games or you hate those games because of what they weren't. But this is essentially that unit where if you like, I think if you like jack into the net, you like, I think this is where you can do it. Or this is a brain dance unit. I'm like, I, I'm pretty sure it's one or the other. I think it's a brain dance unit. I think it is. I think it is. It's like your own personal brain dance unit at home. Now, in the 2018 like gameplay that was for 48 minutes long, if you go and if you look at that apartment, this console isn't here. This unit isn't here. And if you don't know what I'm talking about because you're a, um, an audio listener, it's essentially a, like a, a cylindrical device hanging from a ceiling that's like projecting things um, across, uh, like around it, right? So this thing, the um, the Brain Dance Studio or the Net, I think it's a Brain Dance Studio. This thing right here, this will allow you to like, like review and recover certain things um, within Brain Dance uh, that that you want to. It's kind of like your own personal Brain Dance unit. And this is your new apartment that you'll buy. And they'll 
like they'll show it to you later on. But yes, like it, it's it's kind of confirmed. It's it without it actually being confirmed that you can buy property within the game. So just thought that I would mention that. <clears throat> Anyways. Sorry if you can hear my microphone squeaking, by the way. So here's the kind of you changing perspectives with Johnny, right? In this video where this is, I don't know, I don't remember who she is, but she's super important to the story of Johnny Silverhand and even you, right? So the game is called Cyberpunk 2077, but the original tabletop game was called Cyberpunk 2020. And in that board game, Johnny Silverhand, he's a rocker boy who's kind of like a rocker boy. He's actually the original cyberpunk, right? What a cyberpunk is, is somebody who essentially is rebelling against the establishment, the the um, the mega corporations, the cyberware, like like the the corporate, the corporate, the corporization or the corporatization or however you want to say it of, you know, America and of Night City because of a bunch of bad stuff that that happens within um this universe the um i think uh the the corporate wars for example are are um are are kind of the main cause of a lot of uh johnny's issues he was a veteran of um i think the third corporate war and if you don't know what those were essentially um wars were fought over interests like economical interests right within uh the planet right like corporations like militech and arasaka who we'll be talking about a lot by the way in this um in in this video those two um those two corporations were fighting over um were fighting each other over essentially just like business right and johnny was one of those veterans who fought i think for militech i think he did and i think that's also how he got his 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 silver hand right now in 2020 he he kind of strikes a deal with militech because they've captured this girl i think i think this girl right here uh, this girl, they capture her, and he's trying to go save her. And he leads this uh, this last-ditch effort at Arasaka Towers, and we'll kind of get into it later on. He leads this, like, last-ditch effort um, to Arasaka Towers in Night City, by the way, um, which Arasaka's headquartered there. And he takes this nuclear bomb, and he blows up the tower. He saves the girl, um, but he's pronounced, and he's supposedly supposed to be dead, right? Because, you know, he, he fired off a nuclear warhead and it destroyed the city and all that good stuff, right? Now, in the video game, as they'll kind of show off later on, Johnny, his conscience has been embedded into this immortality chip, which it's super important to remember that because there's been some rumors going on about certain people using it and certain people who haven't used it, but Johnny uses it. And as they'll go into later on, the reason why, not the reason why he uses it, but like his consciousness is essentially trapped into this chip. Now, fast forward 57 later uh, years later from 2020 to 77, right? What happens is your character and your friend, Jackie, they go and they rob Arasaka of this specific chip with Johnny's conscious in it, right? But because it was like taken from its containment unit, Somebody has to inject the chip, whether it's you or Jackie, into their skull and like so that way it can be preserved, right? That's how you get Johnny Silverhand embedded in your conscience and stuff like that. But we'll kind of get into that later on as well, right? So here's kind of and by the way, there's this constant back and forth between you kind of reliving his memories, right? Like this is Johnny Silverhand. And this is you now. This is the Ripper Doc talking to you about how essentially he's embedded into your conscience and there's there's literally nothing you can do about it. The girl that he goes and he saves, he risks everything for, right? This is where he's being stored, the chip. And then I think the night that he actually rescues the girl is when he leads a riot, which we'll kind of see. He leads a riot to kind of distract Arasaka. Uh, in the front and he goes to Militech and he flies to Militech, um, not Militech. Um, he goes to Militech and he flies into Arasaka via, um, like an aerodrone or an area uh, or some type of helicopter thing. And he lands on the rooftop and he fights a bunch of people and he, he essentially dies. And there's a lot of important stuff that goes into that event, but I'll kind of get into that later. <clears throat> this is also kind of an interesting scene. I don't know if this is Johnny or somebody else, whoever it is, they're wearing a samurai shirt. I think this might actually be Johnny because he's wearing rings. I can't see his tattoos. I'm not sure. 
not, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. But this is essentially the night that Johnny Silverhand goes and he rescues the girl, right? I said, and, and there's some, you know, Easter eggs here, like, you know, the Militech. I think this is one of the uh, the band members, right? So this is Militech. You're about to enter into the plane or the, the helicopter. This is uh, Night City at night, obviously. And I, th- I think this is a plane or something being destroyed. And they're flying over to Arasaka right now, right? This is the bomb that he uses to detonate Night City. And it looks like he's taking drugs. I don't know what. Him taking drugs, more drugs. A lot of drugs in this video game, by the way. This is your character, by the way. And the, how I know this is your character is one of the easiest ways to just tell whether or not it's your character versus Johnny is this. His gigantic metallic left hand, which is not here on his left hand. This is you. It's kind of interesting to see what your character is doing and why they're doing it, right? Now, hold on. That was super important. Now, this guy in the shadows is the CEO of Arasaka um, International, whatever their official company name is. The reason why he's super important is, and I think this may be his daughter or granddaughter, the reason why he's super important, he's 156 years old in the game, right? He should be dead right now. And the theory that's been kind of going on is that he has has achieved some form of immortality as well, um, whether it's by, like, having clones of himself or having, like, different body parts, from di- like, like, to replace his heart with other people's hearts or whatever, but he, he essentially has lived for a very long period of time uh, to the point where I think this is either his granddaughter. This definitely isn't his daughter because, again, he's like 150-something years old. This is like granddaughter probably. And what he's essentially done is he's stepped down from the leader of Arasaka, but he's also maintained firm control. He's kind of led the company from the shadows, right? And he he's going to play a big part because – like probably the whole reason why Johnny is in your mind is because of him, because he fa- he found out how to have some form of immortality within the game, right? This is the night, by the way, um, that Johnny stages the riot and he goes to um to Night City. This scene right here, where he's lighting a flare, if you can see that AKA, that's Arasaka. It's not short for Arasaka; it's just his left arm is blocking the rest, right? He's lighting a flare. It's at night. There's smoke. This is him landing on the roof, by the way. He's shooting, you know, the guards and things of that nature on the on top of the roof. And then there's just some other parts of the game. This is kind of, I think this is him and his band member. And it's really hard to tell because they kind of just, like, go through it super quick, by the way. And this is obviously the doctor kind of telling you, hey, um, uh, maybe don't trust him. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe don't trust him, right? This is interesting, right there. Oh yeah, by the way, on top of flipping from the main character's perspective, the male perspective, and Johnny Silverhand's perspective, there's also the female version of the main protagonist as well. Her nails, the shoe, stuff like that. You know, kind of emphasizing that, you know, you can play as both if you wanted to. Obviously on two separate. You can't play as like a male and a female on the same playthrough. It's like, you know, I don't know actually. I don't know. We'll see. This is um his his car, the Porsche. What is it? The 911? The Porsche 911? Not he has? I'm not sure. I don't know Porsches at all. I don't know cars at all. Yeah, they kind of continue forward with the trailer. Oh, okay. I thought they were going to show it. They didn't. More scenes of the riot. And that's the trailer. All right. And then he kind of cracks a joke with you, you know, saying like, uh, like, like you saying, you know, you know, Johnny, you're a dick. And then he says, well, you're a cunt. I think we'll fit it well together. We like to share things with you and other times we like to keep secrets and it can be worth it for that big reveal. Pretty sure nobody was expecting to see Keanu Reeves on stage at E3 2019. So let's go behind the scenes to see how Keanu Reeves brought rocker boy Johnny Silverhand to life. You could say it's breathtaking. Cyberpunk 2077, Johnny Silverhand. I've had the opportunity to do voiceover a few times. I'd worked on a cartoon. I had done some documentaries. I'd never done this much. 
You know you don't gotta speak out loud to talk to me. And I've processed some shit. Changed my mind. Don't want you dead anymore. You know, and got to play a character in so many kind of different ways because of different paths or threads or choices. So you almost get to play one moment, say you have a decision. Would you take a bullet for it? With three different behavioral attitudes. So that was fun. You know, he's uh, Johnny's either a dick or he's happy or he's trying to convince. You know why? Because you've always been a fucking pussy, Carrie. So it's been fun, and that was kind of what I was interested in, you know, the different options that the game could play, you know, playing the same person, but with different versions of them. Motion capture, baby. Johnny Silverhand. Uh, so one of the first elements that I was involved in with the game was motion capture. I've done a, a fair bit of motion capture. I did it with, uh, in the Matrix films, so to start doing the motion capture for Johnny. It was all very familiar to me. The only difference, I think, technologically, was how close they were going to real-time review. But creatively, it was very familiar in the sense of starting a, a library of, of gesture and the toolbox, let's say, for the animators to work with for the character. So you get to see Johnny as the rock star, you know, you hear about his military past, you know, and he's fighting for his survival. Yeah. So he's kind of got all of these things leading into the moment of this guy. It's really a kind of an interpretation, because I think there's a Johnny Silverhand in all of us. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a good sense of humor, if not a little dark at times. He's very passionate, he cares, you know, it's, um, He's kind of naive, but he's also super experienced in life. He's got certainly an appetite for life. Oh, man. No, you're wrong. He wants to change the world, you know? But he has a cause that he wants to fight against the corpocracy. Come on. Don't tell me you're not interested. He's kind of looking for a different kind of freedom. Corps have long controlled our lives, taken lots. And now they're after our souls. At least I believed in something bigger. At least I had a cause. What CD Projekt Red has shared with me in the way that they talk about the game and what I've seen is that it's got a, a lot of freedom. There's so many different paths that you can play the game on. But it's not just quests of paths. It's like, who are you? How do you want to play the character? If I gotta kill, I'll kill. If I need your body, I'll fucking take it. You can go into action, you can go into mystery, you can problem solve in different ways. And where you go in this world, there's so much detail. There's so many different things that you can go off into that are really interesting um, and fun. There's a real drama to the game and emotional stakes to it. And then there's lighter sides to it. And of course, the music, production design, technologically, how cutting edge it is. I don't think there'll be a game that looks like this. Yeah, it's intense. I take the driver, you get his side too. Good job. Yeah. Bye bye. Very well said by Keanu Reeves. The only thing that I'll kind of comment on that's... It's its not even really that big that much. Where is he? Who's that big motherfucker? Who's the cyborg? You know that big motherfucker that was like there for like two seconds? I can't remember where he was. I wish I'd kind of marked it. The interesting kind of di dichotomy between... Johnny Silverhand and the character that I'm talking about here, he's somewhere. It's that big robot. I mean, there's a lot of big robot robotic dudes, but um, the night that Johnny, Johnny Silverhand, for example, not for example, but the night that he leaves, or not leaves, but like the night that he goes into Arasaka headquarters and blows up Arasaka headquarters, is the same night he kills this like elite mercenary 
that everybody fears that Arasaka has essentially replaced all of his body with metallic parts. I cannot remember who he is, but he's a um, a big motherfucker. <laughs> you know, like he's he's a big ass dude. And your character actually walks by him, and I cannot remember for the life of me where where it is. Let me kind of put it on like two two speed to try and find it, because I want to find it. Because he's so important to, like, Johnny Silverhand as a character. And, like, what, like, why he's kind of disappeared. Like, the reason why he didn't escape that night that he blew up Arasaka headquarters is because of this big motherfucker. There he is. Boom. This guy is, um, is old as fuck, too. Like, he's got to be, like, 70, 80 years old. Him. And this, this perspective doesn't do it justice. Let me, boom. Right there. Okay, he may be like seven feet tall. Your character, I think this is the male, not the female. I don't know. I actually don't know who's walking here, whether it's the male version or the female version. This dude's fucking ginormous, right? So you can see his entire body has essentially been replaced by parts, right? The only thing that looks like it, like even his eyes, right, have been replaced. And the one thing that you notice about him specifically, this guy, hold on, I got a burp. Excuse me. Perfect. The one thing that you notice about him, this symbol right here, and I don't think there's anything else on his body that tells me where he's from. Yeah, there isn't. It's that symbol right there. This symbol. This is the symbol for Arasaka. The night that Johnny stormed Arasaka headquarters was the same night this guy was here. Apparently, he killed him, but Arasaka, of course, they brought him back to life. Uh, being a uh, being a cyborg, and um, now he's been in servitude for them for like uh, fifty years. So that's awesome. But yeah, I think Keanu Reeves essentially said everything that I have to say about this. Like, I, I think uh, he he could not have uh, I could not have said it better than him when it comes to the uh, the voice acting. I'll kind of skip this part because essentially it's all about like talking about. Johnny Silverhand and things of that nature and I don't not Johnny Silverhand really if it was about it's about bringing Johnny Silverhand to life I don't think it's that interesting they're just talking about mocap mocap excuse me and it's not really with Keanu Reeves in it like it's not like they had Keanu Reeves every now and again it's like literally they're just talking about mocap and what it's like to work with Keanu Reeves are you interested in that I'm I'm not he's a consummate professional that's how many minutes is that? Seven, seven minutes. Um, shortened to like five seconds. He's a consummate professional. He's a uh, professional. Excuse me. He's awesome. All right. Now on to the um, the score and the soundtrack of this video. Into when you're driving around Night City. Score is the main vessel of emotions in both movies and video games and Cyberpunk 2077 is no different. It actually took us a long time to find the right color of the music. Getting that sound together is almost as important as the actual look of the game itself because music is really helping you feel this emotional connection to the game. So one of the main ideas was to take the cyberpunk genre out of the 80s and give it a 90s flair. We took elements from rave, IDM, industrial, and make them fit our narrative purposes. We've decided that close to 100% of our music would be purely electronic. That's why we tried to stick to analog synths as much as possible, so it's got a warmth to it. I'm super proud of the team we've managed to gather for this project. For me, it was basically my own personal aesthetic matching the aesthetic of the game. When I read the brief, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I can be myself. I can make music and it, it come from an honest place. 
I love the fact that the music in this game is so varied. So we have some tracks that are super dirty, super heavy, and then we have some tracks that are very beautiful and ambient. I'm using all kinds of different effects. So it's been uh, great to be able to experiment with the sound and the style. my first time actually doing any drum tracking for a video game. It's been really exciting, it's been a lot of fun. It's all about making you feel like a perfect killing machine, mm -hmm. because that's, that's what you are, basically. Well, I can do that all day long, so you'll just, you'll just, you'll just have to tell me what you like and what you don't like. Cool, okay. It's not gonna sound like one thing, depending on what part of the city you're in. We basically scored every quest pretty much with custom assets created specifically for that quest. We ended up having over seven and a half hours of music in, in Cyberpunk. Working on Cyberpunk has just been insane. <laughs> um, I can seriously say that I've never worked with such a bunch of mad people in my life and mad brilliant. The gear that we use comes out of boutique shops or they are vintage synthesizers like this Polyvox. I really hope all this effort put into creating this score pays off with satisfying and enjoyable listening and gaming experience. Hello, Night City. What's shaking, Night Good City? Good morning, Night City. Your man, Stan, here. Ooh, I love this town. Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her. And now, a shout out to all the lowlifes over at the Atlantis. Ladies and gents, here's that all-time classic in Night City. Soundtrack is one of the key elements we use to build believable world. We've invited artists from around the world, incredible talents, incredible musicians, to write and produce songs just for us, for this project. The soundtrack for Cyberpunk is insane. So the soundtrack being all the songs that they've got going on, whether it's on the radio or on the background, all these just amazing bands. We've got over 150 custom genre bending tracks, all waiting for you to discover them by yourselves. You know, the reason I want to be a part of Cyberpunk is, well, basically I know The Witcher is super sick, and then I actually got to play a preview of the game which was fucking incredible. I've always wanted to do something connected to a video game, so I was pretty excited when this came in, and it was like an instant yes. I was kind of imagining what it would be like being a character in that game. The person that's a musician in this world in this time has grew up in that space. This isn't just some fun shit, there's also an intellectual and spiritual history to this world that's been constructed for you, you know? We want to provide you with the soundtrack to fucking shit up. Like, how could you not want to be a part of that? So they're kind of going to get into it. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, they're kind of going to get into something else. Um, but before I kind of continue, I kind of want to, I, I, I kind of like put this thought out there on the last podcast that I recorded. I was like, I was like, wouldn't it be cool, right? So the whole premise of the whole like, of, of you know, of, of all of these artists and things of that nature um, in Cyberpunk 2077. And these are like legitimate artists. These are like, um, musicians, these are rappers, these are singers, these are rock bands that are going to be in, in cyberpunk. These are artists, right? That are going to be in, in cyberpunk. And I think like the whole premise of the game is like, Hey, we're going to drive around and you're going to listen to your music inside your car. But I was like, I was kind of thinking out loud because I've seen scenes in certain pieces of gameplay where you drive around. And by the way, this is Johnny's Porsche right here. I just noticed that. You're like driving around and you get out of your car and the music is still going like the music, the songs and things of that nature are still going. So I kind of like and they're going to kind of get into it in a little bit. I was kind of wondering, like, like how exactly maybe not how, but like if you could create your own playlist that you want to play in certain situations and in certain scenarios and it would only take like a couple of button pressures. I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if that's something that they're going to do. It sounds, it kind of sounds like it. And the reason why I think that that's something that they can and 
probably maybe will do, maybe, I'm not sure, is because of, um, because of, like, how cyberware and components like that work, it's all about, like, 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 adding stuff artificially to your body, like, like, I'm, I'm listening to this, uh, to this video via headphones, right, but theoretically speaking, in Cyberpunk 2077, you wouldn't need headphones, for example, right, you would just, not, obviously while you're playing the game, but in the game, your character wouldn't need headphones. They would just play the music, I guess, in their mind or brain. I don't know. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's like, can you essentially have a playlist of songs that you want to play and listen to those songs? Or do you, like, like, is it only in your car? I guess. I don't know. Pretty sure that's it. They're going to go into something cool. And um, then I'll kind of uh, continue forward with that. We'll see. For those of you who can't wait to hear more from our composers, we're going to be releasing a special six track Cyberpunk 2077 EP featuring tracks from the game's original score onto streaming services for you to enjoy for free. And they'll be live at the end of this episode so you can give them a listen later. In addition, if you're planning on live streaming Cyberpunk, or if you just want to make videos, we want to introduce you to a new mode that will allow you to disable certain copyrighted tracks. We know that for content creators, licensed music can sometimes be problematic. So with this new mode, you'll be able to disable a small number of selected tracks which could cause some issues, replacing them with a different song, helping to avoid any problems. If you're going to be live streaming from console, this will start automatically, but you can toggle it on and off in the options as needed. And for PC players, you'll be able to turn it on and off in the game options. Don't forget- Reason why they did that was because of the uh, the Twitch DMCA like stuff that's been going on for like the last couple of months. It's pretty much why they did that. And are they gonna talk about anything else? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're gonna have this this scene where it's not this scene, but like like this conversation where they talk about this um this technology called Jolly that essentially can like have have way better um, motion capture or I don't even I'll let them describe it because I don't, I don't even know what it is to be honest with you. So hi, my name is Sarah Watling. I am the CEO of Jolly Research in Toronto, Ontario. In this video, we're going to show you a little bit about Jolly the software uh, and Jolly in action within the world of Cyberpunk 2077. Rayfield's mine. Jolly is a suite of tools and a suite of services uh, that uh, result in uh, what we think is the coolest and best uh, and highest quality facial performance on characters. Oh, is that supposed to sound familiar? It's automatically generated on a face based on um, audio dialogue, audio speech from a voice actor. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. What Jolly tries to do is it tries to get to the root of what is being expressed in the vocal performance and put that on a 3D character. That's Rogue, best fixer in all the Night City. There is just an incredible amount of performance in this game. Sure. A procedural solution allows you to animate over and over and over again at tremendous scale. Jolly is what powers every single character in the game of Cyberpunk 2077 in all of the languages that the game has been localized for. All you're doing is changing an attribute. For example, speech style. If you want your character to to shout instead of mumble, instead of issuing a set of commands that redo the animation, instead you click an attribute going from, in this case, mumble to shout. But you walk, you bleed, but you walk, you bleed. But you walk, you bleed. If the lip sync is right, you don't notice. If the faces match and match the performance, you don't notice because you're too busy paying attention to how awesome the game is, how much you care about these characters, how much, what, what you're gonna do. And that's what we want. That to me is, that's, that's the sizzle. Don't you know you owe the sheriff a word when you pay his town a visit? To tell him what's brought you here. Maybe even over a cup of coffee. 
So that's jolly. Um, do you now know what it is? Cause I, I still don't. Now we're excited to reveal digital and in-game rewards for Cyberpunk 2077. It's our way of saying thank you for your support. Now, every copy of the game comes with digital downloadable goodies such as the art book, the original score, and a digital comic, all from the cyberpunk universe. But there's more. Context, um, that this is stuff that you get within the base game. So, like, everything that you see here, and I'm going to have to pause it here, everything that you see here is, like, base game stuff. So, you get the postcards, you get the map, you get the um, the world compendium thing. It's it, it all comes essentially within the box. Like this stuff will come. Everything that you see here will come within the box, right? This stuff that over here, the sound uh, cyberpunk source book, the art book, look, the digital comment, the wallpapers, the original score that will come in um, in digital forms, which kind of sucks because I still have the soundtrack for The Witcher Three on DVD or CD. Excuse me. But I mean, that was like five years ago and streaming services were literally not a thing five years ago. And a digital comic all from the cyberpunk universe. But there's more. You can also claim in-game items for cyberpunk 2077. For example, you could be rocking the wolf school jacket for simply connecting the game to your GOG account. I don't have a GOG account. A GOG, GOJ, GOG. I don't have one. I don't have one. I bought The Witcher 3. I put in 700 hours into The Witcher 3. I'm probably going to play a little bit of The Witcher 3 again before Cyberpunk comes out. As far as a, a GOG account, no, I, I do not have a GOG account. Kind of, kind of sucks because I put a fuck ton of time into The Witcher 3. And if you have other CD Projekt Red games, such as The Witcher or Gwent, you can get even more. And it works both ways. If you connect the game to your GOG account, you can also unlock special in-game items for Gwent, the Witcher card game, such as the samurai-inspired card and coin back, and the breathtaking title. Now, this new My Reward program is for everybody. No matter which platform you're playing Cyberpunk on, you'll be able to get your digital goodies and in-game items. Now this is just the beginning and there'll be more items coming in the future and we'll have more information on my rewards soon. As always, don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. So before we take a look at that new gameplay trailer, we just want to reveal that a number of games media from all over the world have been playing Cyberpunk 2077. We'll get into games radar here in a couple of minutes and you'll be able to read their latest impressions when this episode of night city wire finishes so you can go and check them out so now let's wrap up this episode and take a look at that brand new gameplay trailer a little bit before we get started with that um do i have anything else to say about the free game the free stuff like, like that's that's such a cd pre-r thing to do you know to give out free stuff you know, before the game even is released. And again, it's like most games, they don't even have like a free map or a free booklet or a free CD and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy with like the free stuff that I'm getting in the base version of the game. It just kind of like, I don't like, I hope that they don't do everything via the GOG account, you know, thing, because I don't have one. And I, I think it's like their version of, um, of like a retailer, of like a video game retail retailer. Um, I like I buy everything physical, so I don't buy anything digital. So I don't have a GOG account, one thousand percent. But more likely than not, unfortunately, I'm probably gonna have to get one. Literally, because they're probably gonna if they're probably gonna be like, well, if you want to use the online services that we provide, you're gonna have to have an account with us and things of that nature. And it's just I just, ugh. hopefully they don't do that, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, like the free stuff that they give you is awesome. It's awesome. They got a lock on us. Engine's been hit! Get us out of here! I'm losing control! <laughs> At CD Projekt Red, we dedicate ourselves to telling immersive stories. Yet with every new project, we set out to make our games bigger, more complex, deeply engaging. Come on, V. Let's get you home. Cyberpunk 2077 marries exploration of a vast open world with kinetic combat, 
story-changing player choices, and robust character development, all to bring you into our vision of the dark future. You ever feel like the city doesn't give you a choice? You either burn alive in it, or you never existed at all. The year is 2077. An economic crisis culminating in nuclear conflict has left America in pieces. With most of the continent degenerating into lawless war zones, people from all over have converged on the already overcrowded Night City, one of the world's last great megalopolises. A hub amassing the best in resources and know-how, and home to manufacturers of cutting-edge technologies, Night City continues to offer the promise of a civilized future. What? No, no, this isn't happening. Oh, but it is. But in the city streets, a merciless struggle for power rages. Gangs, corporate agents, hustlers, religious cultists, politicians, and all manner of criminals strive to outplay one another. Ordinary people get caught in the crossfire. Looking for justice in Night City. I seek revenge. Much more feasible here. In this world, consumed by never-ending conflict, sometimes only an outsider will get the job done. Elizabeth tells me you have answers for us. I'm all ears. And that's you, an urban mercenary, a cyber-enhanced gun for hire. You seem to understand each other. Take this, too. As a mercenary, you swear no allegiance. You've chosen the outlaw life and trust that your abilities will carry you up Night City's ruthless underground social ladder. The heart of Night City. That's it right there. To thrive as a merc, you need the right combination of gear, skills, and reputation. Dex had a load to say about you. I hope he wasn't overselling. With the money you earn, you can turn yourself into a living weapon, buying guns and enhancements in the hundreds. As you roam the city streets, you gain the experience you need to upgrade abilities and acquire perks. Combine the right skills and gear to create a gunslinger with inhuman reflexes. A stealthy netrunner with command of all surrounding tech. Or practically anyone in between. In Cyberpunk 2077, you steal a prototype biochip that can set you up for life. Being filthy rich. When its sealed container is ruptured, the only way to prevent the biochip from failing is to slot it into your head. It turns out it contains the digitized soul of Johnny Silverhand, a dead rocker boy with violence on his mind. You mean to say there's an actual terrorist in my head right now? He's out for revenge aims to bring down the megacorp that made the chip. Do whatever it takes to stop him, defeat him, gut him. What is in your head can shift the balance of power in Night City. The high and mighty will do anything to lay their hands on it. Told you I'd end you someday. The choices you make will shape your story and determine how events unfold. V, you gotta take them down. That's why we're here. But not everything in Night City is a matter of life and death. Sometimes it's about style, choosing your look, your ride, your pastime, who's at your side. Choosing how you spend your dirty money. <laughs> Welcome to the next generation of open world adventure. Immerse yourself in Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs>
some of okay, there, okay there's so much stuff going on it kind of cuts away to like one of the most popular districts in all of night city it's the entertainment district it's where all of the bars the clubs the arcades are and um i, I forgot what it's called I th- is it called little japan or japantown i think that's what it's called so this is i think japantown that your character is in and the um at the end of the video the narrator kind of talks about how you know you can spin night city with you know um like you get you like you got to like you can spin it with whoever you want or whatever and this is a love interest within the game there's i i don't know how many there are but there's already i think a couple confirmed i think she's the love interest for the nomads for example there's um there's the girl from the Moxes. She's a love interest. And then there's um, the Maria Stout lady. She's the uh, love interest for um, the Corpo. So there's love. In- I don't know if there's male love interest, but I know that there's a lot of female love interests within this video game. And then this is a um, the Nomad. The Nomad's um, like a Nomad tribe. Hold on. I got a burp. Excuse me. This is like a Nomad tribe. One thing that you'll kind of notice about Night City, they're in the Badlands right now, but you'll notice even like miles and miles and miles away from Night City, you'll see these like holographic strips of advertisements, kind of like um, those signs on interstates that like um, like McDonald's signs on interstates telling you, hey, we got a big ass M, you know, right next to you, you know, like McDonald's is right next to you and it's supposed to help you like figure out, oh, there, there's a McDonald's, maybe I should pull in and that, right? Same thing, right? And you'll kind of see that all all throughout the city, right? Just look at how many advertisements there are all throughout Night City, right? You'll see some more kind of on the outskirts of the city as well. This is a weird scene because I didn't know you could, like, swim and go underwater uh, extensive, extensively in the video game. And um, you 1,000% can. And it gets us a certain point where you actually need to have scuba gear as well to go underwater. This is the net. So this is like the internet, except kind of a physical version. You can like put your mind literally on the internet and surf the internet. That's what it is. This is um, Jackie's girlfriend, I think. No idea where this is. This, I have no idea where this is. Now, this is interesting, right? Because you're driving. I forgot what car it's called. I think they may have the car brand inside. No, they don't. But this is one of the high-end cars. I don't know what it's called. It's one of the um, the hyper cars, I think that's what, what they're called, where they don't actually have windows, right? These are screens within the car that project what's outside inside the car, right? So you can see everything outside of your car, but they can't see um, inside your car. And all the screens are like armored plates, um, in, uh, on your car, right? So I don't know if you can tell, but this isn't a window. I don't know if they'll pan. They won't. But that's essentially the car that you're driving there. You're driving a hyper car. It's going 110 miles, 11, actually, because it just bumped up just a little bit. You're going 111 miles. Oh, my gosh. Oops, sorry. You're going 110 miles on the um, on just a regular old street, right? Oh, my God. Stop doing that. Going 110 miles on um, on a regular street. And I've seen this before. I've seen I've seen this piece of gameplay before where you're interacting with some gang members and stuff like that. Here, I don't know who this is that you're talking to, but this is interesting. This dialogue option here where you're talking to Oda. I think that's who that who that is. Um, this dialogue option here is a dialogue option that's available to you if you were a corporate agent, if you were a corpo, right? If you, if that's the life path that you picked, right? So I don't know if there would be more, um, dialogue options for this specific, you know, person. If you were a nomad or a street kid, this looks like to me, a corpo based upon how he's dressed, how this guy is dressed and how, what this car is. This is like a luxurious car. So I'm pretty sure he's a corpo and you're talking to him as if you're a corpo yourself because you are, of course. This is interesting because this is the uh, the character creation screen. About the character creation, um, it's essentially the same as it once was. There's been some differences to it. She is a little bit darker 
than than how she was like a couple of years ago and she has more red hair the female like the female base model or i don't want to say base model what's the word what's it called i don't know what it's called but um her like um what what's it called preset like the female preset is um is a little bit darker and she has red hair but for the most part she looks literally exactly the same and the male looks literally exactly the same but i mean you can change up the presets i mean you can customize them to essentially be who you want to be you can customize their teeth too and the uh the metallic lines that are within their faces by the way as well and their teeth you can customize them by making them for example metallic so it's not like oh it's not like oh you know like we'll just we'll just make them like like it's not like they have a grill within their mouth their whole set of teeth are metal you can do that if you want to. <clears throat> I don't know what this guy is talking about here. Also, you can give tattoo. You can like get tattoos. I don't know how. I think you can get them at at like as a. Pre Oops, sorry, my microphone. My like I accidentally unplugged my microphone. Um, I don't know how you get tattoos. They're presets, I think. I think they're pr just presets. Not presets. I think like you you can make your character have tattoos at the beginning of the game, but I like I heard that you can make them illuminescent, like meaning that they glow. I'm not sure how to do that at all. This is you and the guy that you were talking to earlier. He may be a nomad. He may be somebody else. But he's he's the guy that you were talking to earlier, and you are about to rob this guy and this car. And interestingly enough, right? about Night City. Night City is a free city, meaning that it's it's like Hong Kong, right? So, Night City they have kind of this border, like like almost as if you're entering into a, a a country because you are, right? Here's kind of the the border patrol if you will. Here is I think the wall. It kind of goes from like here all the way to over here and over there. Things of that nature. Um, I think this is a helicopter. It's kind of like the hypercar where it doesn't have any windows. Like you can't really see out of it. You can't see into it, but you can see out of it because there's screens and stuff like that. Here's a bunch of different like advertisements going into the city, kind of reinforcing like, hey, we're going to we have the uh, the mega corporations within the city. And by the way, you can kind of see the holographic advertisements here, right? Kind of going up these small little white lines. You can see them obviously better at night, but here they are these small like white bars that's where the advertisements are going to go right so this is the uh, the border oh yeah and by the way you can even see the uh the skyline for night city boom right there right like right here over here you kind of get a better a better glimpse of it right like that's night city right there right so here it is you can literally see it from miles away. When you're playing as a nomad, you'll actually go through this exact like like border at night and you'll you'll be stopped I think over here because you're trying to smuggle something illegally in and then you drive off and then you drive through this um I don't know, maybe this is like a solar panel field. I'm not sure. But you do have missions definitely outside of Night City. It's kind of like what exactly like what exactly does that entail? What exactly does that mean? You yeah. know? Then you have, like, who is this? Because I've never seen her before, and she's been, like, in another... She was, like, in a screenshot, I think. All right, boom. No idea who that is. Anyways. Another or uh, Arasaka piece of equipment. Another... And, and this is, like, their Arian drone or Aerial drone. This is... Or Arian Dine? I don't know what it's called. This is, um... This is, like, a flying car, essentially. I think this is a car manufacturer. This is um, like a shot of it. This is like inside right here. This is inside um, Arasaka headquarters. As I kind of just like watch the rest of this because there's there's some good stuff. There's some important stuff, but it's like some of it kind of speaks for itself in the sense of like most of this stuff that you're seeing is kind of like 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 it's kind of it, it just speaks for itself this shot right here is of you driving around as a corpo right because 
You can kind of see red and black. The red and black on his suit. Like kind of right here. You can definitely see the black here. Right? Because he's working. Because your character, if you do join, if you do uh, go the the li the corpo life path, you are, you're essentially going to be a um, uh, working for Arasaka. Not essentially. You will be. Right? This is an interesting scene here where this looks like a 6th Street gang hideout, right? Because usually the 6th the sixth Street are like the only the uh the only gang that you that like is is patriotic because they're form uh they're they're with um they they were formed with a bunch of uh veterans and they kind of joined their own gang and they were kind of supposed to be a neighborhood protection service and then they just turned into a gang once they established themselves. This looks like a kind of looks like dudes and prostitutes, man. Like this scene. Like this is at a dingy location. There's girls that are kind of half naked all over the place. There's girls in like fishnets and then there's guys in like suits and whatever. This kind of looks like kind of looks like they brought a whole bunch of, you know, a bunch of girls. Japan town again. For some weird reason, CD Project Red has constantly shown off the Maelstrom gang. Which I think is kind of, uh, like, as an antagonist, is like an ominous threat. Which I think is kind of interesting. Maybe it's just because they look like it. Here's your character getting um, the grip. And his skin has to, like, be torched alive, right? This this is the, um, the, the numbing thing. So that way he doesn't feel his hand being burned alive, you know? This is your boss at Arasaka giving you the money to kill one of his supervisors. Right. I want to talk a little bit about like DPS when it comes to weapons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Here's the big motherfucker that I was talking about that Johnny killed. Here he is right here. This guy. Killed him. And then fifty years later, fifty seven years later, he's still around and kicking. I want to talk about like DPS because I think like I was reading this article by IGN about DPS and things of that nature. And um he was talking about how time to kill is like super slow in this game. And I like want to show you some things to kind of talk about time to kill and things of that nature as a first person shooter. As we kind of watch the, uh, the rest of this, I don't really have that much to say unless I'm missing something here. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The abilities as I'm watching it here. So the ability, oh, wait, I'm going to pause it when it says technical abilities. So the abilities here for your character, right here. So, the abilities here, these are, I think, your core abilities, right? Or your attributes, excuse me. These are your attributes. You can put in attribute points into these different attributes. They don't go over every single attribute, but they talk about how, for example, um, having a technical ability allows you to, um, to have better crafting and better engineering. Reflexes is like guns and stuff like that. It lets you handle guns a lot better, right? To the point where you can like dual wield pistols and you can have better damage with rifles. It's a very, very interesting. And then here, they'll actually kind of go into a little bit of detail with some of the weapons. If I can kind of just see it. Right? With the flight of the sparrow. Uh, reduces the stamina co cost of all attacks with blades by 50%. And then slow and steady. Armor is increased by 15% while moving. And then at level 2, it's 30%. And then offensive defense, I think defensive attacks, they deal like 200% more damage. Something ridiculous like this, by the way. So then they're showing kind of the aiming with the gameplay. Some new enemies that I, I don't think I've ever seen before in the game. You kind of playing as a net runner. And again, right, we kind of talked about the hacking at the, uh, at the beginning of the podcast. But again, like essentially you like essentially it's you have to have a certain amount of RAM like already like like ready to go and things of that nature. And how much RAM you have is um, is dictated by um, how much you use or how much you have base wise, depending on what you have depends on the recovery of your RAM. So, for example, um, the OS that we looked at, I think it's coming up. I think it is. I'm not sure. But the OS that we looked at will have RAM recover at like uh, like 5 
every like 60 seconds so that's a lot of fucking ram to recover at like 60 seconds i thought it was going to be like minutes not like in a minute here is the bot that you have that you steal from um from dexter not from from dexter deshaun but for dexter deshaun i have no it, it looks like it's recording something because you know it's it's recording something but i can't tell how it's recording something because it looks like it's on the wall and you're not and you kind of aren't controlling it i'm not sure i don't know how that works but I was like, I was looking at it and it kind of looked like your character was looking through, it, like it was get, like your character was looking through this wall because I think this is a wall and they were able to look and peer into the room because of the camera and the perspective that the bot is giving you. So you're not really looking at the bot or not looking at this room through the bot's perspective. It's more along the lines of like what it's giving you, the, the commands and th stuff like that. But then on top of that, it's like, when I look at this, like, notice how quick, oh, no, I'm right. No, I was right. I was looking at the milliseconds and not the actual second, right? Or no, is that seconds? Because if this was seconds, this would be minutes and this would be hours. Oh, no, I'm, yeah, that's right. I guess this is the, the time, right? Is that milliseconds? That doesn't seem right. Or is that, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the, the I don't I don't know. Like I don't want to overly analyze it because I don't know. But that's so weird. Wait for Flathead to finish. I think you are controlling the bot somehow. I just don't know how you're controlling it. I'm not sure. This is a little bit of the uh, the combat here. This is an interesting little segment where your character has um has quick hacks unlocked. Because I think, how, how what's their level? Doesn't so. So they kind of kill, I think, one guy and they wound another. And um, they use the quick hacks, right? So this is them going into quick hacks. They select suicide. Boom, it's done. I don't know how long it's going to take or not. Let me see it, um, if there is a duration. Or not a duration, but a, a release. How long does it take? I couldn't see it. <laughs> it literally went so fast that I literally couldn't see if how long it would take yeah they just did it like super quickly and um they switch from using their guns right in in this particular scene with um with their rail gun they switch from using the gun to using um quick hacks to then using their cyberware as a um as a wrist grenade launcher right and you kind of saw it there and it happened very very quickly by the way it didn't happen in like oh he has to like load up everything it's like no it happened stupidly quickly so this is them taking the chip um that stores johnny silverhand's conscience conscience excuse me this is them taking the chip storing it within v's skull and then that looks like your first encounter with johnny silverhand and is that it i think for the most part that's it they're going to show like a little bit like this scene right here, but this is kind of stuff that we've covered. This looks, this is Arasaka uh, HQ. This looks like a board meeting with Arasaka. This is again, Arasaka people. Again, I, uh, like Arasaka is going to be a very important um, group and organization within Cyberpunk 2077. Now this guy is the big motherfucker. He's, this is 2020. This isn't 2077. This is 2020. This, this is, when Johnny Silverhand will blow up Arasaka Towers, right? And how I know this is Johnny. Fuck. Wait. It goes kind of fast. Boom. The Silverhand, right? It's really, really easy. It's like, you know, how, how you tell who's who and who's and, and what's going on and where and things of that nature. It's just, it do, does he have a Silverhand? Speaking of Silverhand. He's going to always be in the background of some of these uh, of some of these events, right? When you get him, so here he is in the background when you're talking to. I have no idea who this is, and then here he is in the background again. And then, uh, like, I found this kind of weird, but also kind of interesting at the same token. It's like what, like, like you're kind of playing a VR game right now. And then it kind of shows you dancing, and then it's going to show. Um, your character's inventory. So this is the picture that I wanted. 
because I remember I was reading this IGN article and how they were describing like how it was really how it's really really hard to do damage in this game because games not games but um the enemies they they feel like bullet sponges keep these numbers in mind 317 damage per second 329 to 90 so essentially you're doing 300 damage per second right and it looks like your character is a level 27 right in this shot and also by the way there's also some really really cool stuff like here's your your individual stats like armor health stamina your backpack cyberware individual uh some more statistics your quick access so maybe like a grenade like uh you know a, a healing potion or something like that your cyber deck which i think is where your ram is stored your lower body clothing your upper body clothing i'm pretty sure these are i don't know if these are cosmetic or armor i'm not sure but this is special i don't know what this is maybe a, a suit for um for net running i'm not sure and these are like a hat and a gas mask it looks like i'm not sure and then they're kind of just going through your inventory kind of something else that i want to attract your attention to this is pretty much the first look at the inventory system of um of cyberpunk 2077 again this is very similar to the witcher 3 where you have 195 uh weight that's on you right now and then you have 240 that you can have on you total and again there's no watermark that says this is a work in progress i think this is the final version of the game that we're going to get right so then it sees you um you're, you're driving around this is julie right and i think the game kind of talks about like how you need a partner or how you can have a partner within this video game and again there's like three i think maybe four confirmed and i think julie is one of the three or four that's confirmed by the way this is your new apartment, by the way, and this is you getting it, like, the first time that you enter into it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is, like, you, this is the first time you enter into it. How I know, it's, like, it, it's not furnished. There's boxes everywhere. It looks like a new old apartment, you know? And then I think you're going to go into, yep, a car garage, and you can buy all of this stuff. I think this is the, the Akira bike, and this is um, a car that... I don't, I don't know if Jackie's going to buy it or not, but he's, like, kicking it around like you can buy it. I'm not sure. And this is the uh, the Quadra here. I've been playing GTA V for, uh, like, for the last month or so. Like, I've, I've like, I, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like this game is very, like, I mean, obviously, it's similar to GTA V, but there, but... Like, there's some stuff about that game that I absolutely love when it comes to the driving. And whenever I watch, like, Cyberpunk um, 2077 and the driving, I I love how it looks. I don't know how it plays and how it feels. But, like, one of the things that I've noticed in GTA V, it's fucking impossible to drift in that game. Like, you cannot drift in that game. And there's times where, like, like for example, here where your car is is drifting. Like, that's drifting. Like, you can't do that in GTA V. You have to, like, slow down to a crawl to fucking drift in that game. And it's, it's in, in, in GTA V, like, it was created seven years ago, so it's maybe not necessarily the, you know, the fair, uh, the most fair thing to compare it to a game that's been created, you know, this year. But still, it's like, like, there's certain things that I feel like you can be able to do when it comes to the cars and the control of the cars in this game over um, in GTA V. All right. And, um, and that's kind of the, um, the last bit of it. Gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. Where's, uh, where is it? Games radar. IGN had like, what was it? They had, what was it? They had, um, they had like, they did the 16 hour preview. Um, games radar did the 16 hour preview. We'll listen to the games radar clip. Let me show you something. So, IGN, they kind of talked about how, and Games Radar may talk about it as well, um, but IGN kind of talked about how the time to kill was stupidly long, and I already kind of am on this section of the game that I kind of wanted to show off uh, because I'd already done this in the last podcast. Here it is. So, they talked about time to kill, right? So, your weapons, the weapons that we got to look at were level 27. So, in this particular um on this particular mission right your character 
probably is a level 27, right? We can kind of infer that based upon how much damage they're doing, right? So, in this interaction, where your character is going through a hallway and they're looking at a, you know, at an enemy downstairs, right? Notice how much damage they're doing. And keep in mind, they're not even really... This is a rifle. This is an assault rifle. They're not even really unloading with the assault rifle. And they, yes, they're missing some shots here and there, but like they could have, like it takes like three seconds. If you time it from like 528 to like 531, I think that's when he starts to fire 528. He kills him at like 531, right? And then this whole sequence where it's in the hallway and he's killing and he's weaving in and out of cover and he's not pushing and he's not really playing that aggro. He throws a grenade. Like this whole sequence takes like 10 to 15 seconds. And I think the enemies are your level. I can't tell. There's no, like, UI or whatever. Also, by the way, how I know that this is, like, 1,000% a... Like, the the final version of the game is that you get an achievement as you're playing the game. But, um... It's... It's done. But more importantly than that, I don't have really that big of a problem with the DPS in the game based upon like what I've actually seen. Another way to kind of like work around the DPS here, and this is like the only two sections of combat that I've seen um, in this uh, in this gameplay demo that they showed off, on, I think on Tuesday, is this scene. Keep it, Now, I want to say this. The guy playing, or the girl, uh, guy or gal that's playing this game is either super nervous because they know that this is going to have to be put out to like millions of people and slash or um they're not very good at it which is okay but um you're gonna see them like miss shots here and i don't think that like that's not the game at all that wasn't the game like they ads and they like they ads and they dragged all the way down like boom like that i i don't know what they were doing i think like i, I don't know what they were doing at all but they like ads they like boom with the shotgun, and then they ADS'd here, and I, I don't, they just, it just, it fucking happens sometimes, sometimes you just miss your shots horribly, and it just, it fucking sucks, but here, they don't miss this shot, they ADS one more time, and they throw a grenade, and they shoot with their shotgun, right, and the shells ignite the, the, um, the grenade, or combust the grenade, I don't know what the, ter uh, the term is, but it makes the grenade explode, and all three people are around them, and this sequence, I think, takes like 10 or 12 seconds or something like that, like, the time to kill is not very long. Maybe it's different difficulty, maybe it's players, I'm not sure. Games, radar, once we listen to the game's radar clip, gonna peace out. All right, here we go. Not going to hold you for too much longer. Yeah, I was able to like cut 30 minutes from my podcast. We'll see from the uh, from the elder, from the other one. Like, OK. As I continue. To watch. All right, here we go. Let's listen to what they have to say. Once we're done with this, we'll kind of just peace out. From the moment you start playing Cyberpunk 2077, it's your story. From the size of your nipples to your choice of life path, V is immediately yours to shape. While CD Projekt Red had us besotted with the growly charm of Geralt for years, with Cyberpunk 2077, the developer is handing the storytelling reins to you and asking you to forge your own tale in Night City. After spending 16 hours with the game, I've only just hit Act 2, and only just started writing V's story. But the journey so far has been intoxicating. Anyone worried that Cyberpunk 2077 may be disappointing shouldn't be. This is a game that will surely surpass expectations. The last time I previewed Cyberpunk 2077, I opted for the Corpo Life Path. A Kind of before I let her continue, um, I, like... I, I feel a, a quick little tidbit. I feel like games media 
like to kind of give parody, they try and be contrarian, right? So they try and find like fault within everything. So for example, with the IGN interview or the IGN like playthrough or whatever, like he was kind of talking about time to kill. And I was like, I don't believe that. Cause I've seen gameplay. I just showed you gameplay of like the time to kill being significantly less than what, um, uh, than what was kind of being as advertised. And on top of that, he was kind of like talking about how combat isn't necessarily very good and how he was talking about how it wasn't like bad. It's good. But like, I, I, I don't know his explanation on it, but like, again, I'm, I'm not sure, man, but I kind of agree with her. Like I've, I've constantly said it. Like I'm, I'm disappointed with the delays. It fucking sucks, but I think this is going to be the best game of the year. Like I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. I said it, I think, um, once the last of us two came out and I was like, you know, I like the last of us part two, but I don't like it that much. Um, to put it, I think over, um, cyberpunk and cyberpunk isn't even out yet. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the last of not with the last of us with cyberpunk 2077. But um, I I haven't really seen a whole lot of things that are significant enough for me to be like, oh, yeah, you this this game isn't going to live up to the expectation of it's going to be like the best game of the year. And that's not because it's CD Projekt Red or it's cyberpunk or whatever. It's because I've actually seen hours of gameplay, both uh, legitimate and leaked for this video game that I'm like, oh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's great. It's awesome into the high-flying lifestyle of the corporate world, filled with money and power. But this time around, I opted for Street Kid. Like the game says, if you want to get to know the streets of Night City, you've got to live them. Fixers, gang leaders and pushers are your neighbours, and you're known around town by name. You're a local in Night City, and the choices and opportunities available to you in the game will reflect that, as they do with each of the three life path choices. But this initial decision is just the beginning. From here, V's life will play out according to the decisions you make, the conversations you have, and the consequences you set in motion. Even after almost two full days with Cyberpunk, it's been difficult to grasp just how far the web spreads from a single conversation between one answer and another. It doesn't help that there's often a subtlety in the difference between the answers you can give. Some, of course, are much more definitive, clearly leading you down very different paths according to where you place your allegiances. But others are much less clear-cut. An optional objective in a mission may involve setting up an alternative meeting, or simply involve calling another character to check in. But all of these have the potential to send objectives spinning in a wildly different direction, or uncover a hidden subplot that could influence your future choices. Literally, that's exactly what happens um, constantly within The Witcher 3. So there's these optional parts of side quests that, uh, that you don't have to do, but to have like the full context of, of what's going on within these very complex situations, you have the option of going, um, going in just guns blazing and being like, yeah, I don't care about the optional stuff. I'll just kind of do my own thing. But then if you do do the optional, um, the optional side of things, sometimes it can make quests better for you. Like sometimes you have information where it's like, it helps you. Sometimes it hurts you. And it's like, Oh wow. I kind of wish that I didn't ever have to, um, to, uh, to figure that shit out, you know, but regard, but either way, like that's, that's pre pretty prevalent in the Witcher three. And it's obviously prevalent in uh, cyberpunk 2077. And it's here deep in the gray between that the real intrigue into cyberpunk's breathtaking narrative gets into your psyche like the biochips that fuel the cybernetically enhanced individuals. I'm being deliberately vague here, because from the outset, even hinting about Cyberpunk's storyline would be wading waist deep into spoiler town. Even the opening six or so hours of this game, pre-credit roll I might add, deliver the kind of story beats you'd expect much further into the narrative. CD Projekt Red isn't afraid to surprise you, to deal out actions and consequences like an expertly concealed poker player, not a tell in sight. But it's always worth remembering that your decisions are literally everything in the game. Of course, CD Projekt Red isn't a stranger to creating living worlds filled with memorable characters. But the first person nature of Cyberpunk 2077, combined with the sheer level of layers to every decision that's on offer, makes this feel like a much more personal journey than any we've had with Geralt and Co. It helps that Cyberpunk offers the most organic gameplay I've possibly ever experienced, the closest to real human interaction. 
If you want to talk to someone, just go up to them. Gone is the press X to interact prompt for the residents of NC. Instead, you'll just be given options for your openers, and then you're in. It's very limited in terms of cutscenes too, instead focusing on offering up interactive conversations that you can still freely control, opting to pick up on something happening elsewhere in the room mid-conversation if you so wish. Your actions are just as important as your words in Cyberpunk. After the opening missions of the game, which vary according to the life path you choose, Night City folds out before you like an overenthusiastic pop-up book, aglow with billboards and noisy with the urban chaos of this problem-filled city. It's hard to over-exaggerate just how full this world is either. The map is a candy store of opportunities, whether it's live crimes in progress, rides to buy, gigs to pick up, side quests to explore, a bit of shopping, or indulging in one of the local joy toys. There's almost too much to do in Night City. But what you do and in what order also matters. I delayed picking up a payment for one of the game's first missions from a fixer called Wakako, and later on in a core mission, I was able to bring up my missing eddies as part of an entirely separate conversation. It's a small thing, but a huge part of how this world is created to feel utterly realistic and always reactive to V's actions. That's not an easy feat, especially in a world that's so densely packed with decisions and distractions as this. After 16 hours, I reluctantly left Night City with some 30-odd side quests and gigs cluttering up my journal, having spent plenty of time diving into the core campaign and a little too long listening in on the conversations of each passerby. Night City is utterly absorbing and utterly beautiful. Cyberpunk 2077 is clearly a huge undertaking. The density of the game's systems is a testament to that, with me only feeling partly comfortable understanding the complexities of the weaponry loadouts, huge skill tree, perks, or my future in cyber enhancements, just to name a few. But the scale does come with some concerns, and while Cyberpunk didn't present me with any game-breaking bugs, the visual bugs were plentiful. Although CD Projekt Red says it's aware of them, I'm hesitant to suggest they'll all be fixed by the time we all get our hands on the full game come December 10th. But with a game this ambitious and frighteningly huge, I'm in the mind to forgive a few unintentional quirks. This is one hell of a game, a neon-soaked seduction from the first second. That's it. All right. That was actually way better than the IGN one, and it was like two minutes shorter. <clears throat> so, kind of one of the things that I kind of I'm hearing from both sides, from both IGN and from Games Radar, is um this kind of like this kind of cluttering of your of your mini map of your journal with side activities, side quests, missions, things of that nature. Um, she just said, she just said, excuse me, that she had 30, 30 side quest missions still available, um, after 16 hours into the game, which, uh, is fucking insane to me. And side quest missions aren't necessarily like, Hey, like we, we have this very, very complex and convoluted side quest mission. It's, it's specifically like, like bounty hunter, uh, bounty hunting missions, uh, uh, jobs that you can do for the NCPD. Like it's not, it's it's a versa it's a lot of different stuff as as far as I understand it. But I get like listen, man. Day one, week one. I'm getting the game. Hopefully, I can get a PS5 by then. But I'm getting the game. I'm gonna freaking. I'm I'm gonna get the game. I'm gonna go into my PS5. Hopefully, I'll have it by then. I don't have a PS5. I'm gonna try and get one on Black Friday. But I'm going to get into the game. I'm going to play for like six, seven, eight hours. Wait, will I have a PS5 by then? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get into the game. I'm going to play like the first, hopefully, like I've, I've heard, here's the thing about Cyberpunk that I've heard. I've heard that the opening section is 30 minutes long in some cases or to an hour long. But now I keep hearing like this, this like notion that it's four hours long. And I'm like, wait, what? I don't know if like the opening section for the life path is 30 minutes long, or if the opening section for the life path that you choose is like three to four hours long. I, I don't know. I hope that it's short. So that way I can, you know, get in, get out. Cause I want to play all three life path starts. So that way I can have footage of all of them and then get into like my main, my main, like, 
uh, playthrough. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Cyberpunk 2077. Hopefully it doesn't get delayed. Hopefully they have, like, an hour's worth of gameplay that they can show off. Um, even though this, like, five-minute gameplay trailer that they released, and even the gameplay trailer that they released on Tuesday was kind of awesome. But um, I kind of hope that they, that, like, that they have it, you know? Because I, I, I like Cyberpunk. I want to see it. I want to see the gameplay, you know, for it. You know, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, that was 24's podcast, the best video gaming and sports podcast on the entire internet. If you like this podcast, you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, pretty much where you can find any podcast. You can find 24's podcast. Hopefully, um, this podcast will actually export correctly, so that way I can actually um, upload this video, so that way I don't have to record an almost two-hour-long podcast. Again, please, for the love of God, OBS, don't corrupt my um, my podcast episode but um hopefully you enjoyed it ladies and gentlemen i'll be back i'll be back monday to like give you some analysis of the gameplay on top of the analysis that we had today um but hopefully i'll see you on monday until then i hope you have fantastic oh yeah by the way subscribe subscribe to the, you know to the podcast to the youtube channel to all that good stuff i'll see you on monday uh, peace out